From the moment we arrive on this planet, we're all heading in the same direction. But maybe the way that the years play out isn't inevitable. So how about the idea of being able to increase our health spans, live the better years of our lives for longer, feel like we're 40 at 60? I let a system of science and data run my body. There's 15 to 17 years of healthy life that is up for grabs for all of us. We head to California to meet the scientists and founders who want to make it a reality. Do you consider yourself a guinea pig? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I consider myself to be an explorer on the frontiers uh, trying to find out what's possible. Tech entrepreneur Brian Johnson is spending millions trying to turn back time on his body. I refer to myself as a professional rejuvenation athlete. It's a new sport I want to create. Uh, it, I'm not a biohacker, I'm not a health enthusiast, I am a professional rejuvenation athlete. I love it. Working with a team of 30 scientists, his daily life is dictated by an extreme regime of fitness, diet, tablets, tracking and treatment. I am chronologically 45 years old. Biologically, I'm a few hundred ages. My left ear is 64, my fitness test, the Sam 18, my heart is 37, my diaphragm strength is 18. And I playfully say I'm trying to become like an 18 year old. My son is 17, and so I always tease him and say, when I grow younger, I want to be like you. Where's he taking me? Brilliant. Wow. Where to start in here? Is this one of those devices that measures the age of your skin? That's right. How's yours doing? <laughs> We've made about 22 years of progress in reversing the age of my skin. It takes all these images of your face and you get about 10 reports on pore size, UV spots, reds, browns. Your skin is amazing, but is this just from your regime or is there other help? Uh, other help too. So we have some lasers over there, which I'll show you. But there's uh, no injections. That's just from everything in here. That's right. And what do we have next? So this is something that also tells you the health of your cardiovascular system through your age. It looks at advanced glycinated products in your skin. So if you want to try it, uh, you could put your arm on it and it will tell you your age. Uh, ideal score would be around two. Right, so I'm only a little bit too old for my age. It could be worse. What's That's next? Right. Okay, <laughs> this is an ultrasound machine. It's medical grade, so this is what you'd see in a hospital. A lot Are of you people... having a baby? <laughs> Who knows with what you're getting up to already? What are you actually using it for? So, so we look at the brain, the lungs, the heart, the pancreas, the pos prostate, tendons, ligaments, everything. It's really a useful uh, technology to have in the clinic to do it on a routine basis. How do you feel just before you do any of this tracking? Do you get a bit nervous, hopeful? Do you have expectations? Uh, it is a game. Some of my most happiest days are when we do these full measurement days. <laughs> That's a lot better. What's your motivation? Are you doing this for yourself or for humanity? I, when I was 21 years old, I decided that I wanted to spend my life doing something meaningful for the world. And I didn't know what to do, so I said, I'm going to make a whole bunch of money being an entrepreneur by the age of 30, then I'll decide what to do. And so for the past, uh, since I sold my company, Braintree Venmo, uh, I made $300 million. And this question was, what could I do uh, that would matter in the year 2,500? And right now, it could be aging. If we slowed the speed of aging and even reversed it, it would change what it means to be human. Do you think you're risking your health here? In all the things you're doing to protect it, do you think there's also yeah. some real risk? Certainly there's always risks. But there's potentially an argument that we are being more safe than anyone else because we have the rigor of measurement. Whilst Brian signed his life away to experimentation, I visit the Buck, the world's first institute for ageing research. These scientists are working on drugs that they hope could delay age-related disease. Would you say there's been huge scientific advancement in this field recently, or is there just a sudden trend for investment and interest in it? The science has matured. 
in terms of, you know, we've been doing this for close to 30 years, understanding basic mechanism of aging, number one. Number two is societal. Uh, needs are there. You know, have a rapidly aging population with an increasing burden of chronic disease. And so One really important discovery in mice here was the ability to reduce what are called senescent cells. These zombie cells play a useful role throughout our lifetimes. But as we age, we acquire many more. And as they also lead to inflammation, that increased number ends up providing a hotbed for cancer and all sorts of disease. But maybe we're missing something. Lifestyle is responsible for about 93% of your longevity only about 7% on your genetics, so you can't blame your parents. A lot of exercise, you know, some fasting, a lot of the good sleep, um, a lot of social connection, very little alcohol. Try to spend at least 14 hours of your 24-hour day without ingesting any calories. But if they work, why do we need to be trying to deal with this bigger picture of cellular senescence? Senescence is still going to happen. Hopefully, if you exercise, it's going to be delayed by 10, 15, 20 years. I don't mean to be saying that lifestyle interventions is, is all and, and that needs to be done. There's, there's a need for science for the future. What's that thing that people do where they try and they sit on the floor and then they try and get up without using their hands? Whatever Eric's been doing seems to be working. This is meant to be some sort of sign of youth, isn't it? If you can yes. stand up by not using your hands and just... How can anyone do that, pushing your feet down? How's it possible? How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I think it means that you're under 20 or something. Exactly. Um, I can't do it. I can't I do it. <laughs> Thank you. Our furry friends could get their paws on a life-extending pill first, though. I love my dog to bits. You'll notice there are no Great Danes here. There are no large dogs here. Um, and it's because they can sometimes have a lifespan of six, seven, eight, nine years. You know, almost half that of what a little guy like this could be expected to have. And our hypothesis is that the short lifespan of big dogs is a disease. So where are you at now with the trials? So we're kicking off our big uh, pivotal study. So we're trying to understand, you know, does our drug extend lifespan and quality of life? It's a preventative drug inhibiting the protein that we believe drives big dogs to age fast. And if everything goes to plan, we'll hopefully have a drug on market and in 2025. If successful, Loyal's drug could hasten a solution for humans too. So dogs eat similar diets to us, they live in the same environment, and they also develop the same age-related diseases we do at approximately the same time in our lifespan. So if a drug works in a dog, it's not one-to-one -to, -one to work in a human, but it's much more likely versus we do a lot of research in mice and it doesn't translate at all. Meanwhile, I'm off to a longevity meetup. So are these brainy scientists living the longevity lifestyle? Well, there are still unopened bottles of wine, so probably. <laughs> Here tonight we had a longevity-friendly um, mix of food with the seaweed and the fish. Other parts of the industry haven't been quite so wholesome, though. For decades, this has been, there's been a lot of snake oil, a lot of miracle pills, the god pill, all of this stuff have been desperate to believe. Just ask this leading Silicon Valley doctor. I don't know why people want to gamble with their, their, their health. I understand gambling with your money. So if it's safe and it's not effective like a vitamin, some vitamins, um, you know, then you're gambling with your money. But if it's, if it's not proven safe and it's not proven effective, you're gambling with your health. And then there's people spending a lot of time doing these things and they're not living their life. They're living the version of their life to give themselves a future life, but what happens if that future life never materializes? Good news is with all this new blood tests, there's, there's new breath tests, there's, there's urine tests, there's, there's wearables, there's apps, there's so many things to track things. So if you really wanna, like if you're overweight and you have high blood pressure, 
and you love your wine and you love like, your, your life, but you want a pill to make you live long, guess what? You can't stop the wind with your hands. Whether pills or procedures are proven or not, there are a whole lot of people who are really obsessed. Does it sometimes just seem a bit culty, some of this stuff? <laughs> I think it can. Very culty. And, and I try to protect my people <laughs> against that culty. We try not to let it become that way. There's one issue that none of this can resolve, though. In the United States, the single biggest determinant of your life expectancy is your postcode, where you live. And so that is a problem that cannot be engineered. And there are bigger questions over how we may need to work longer, the unexpected diseases that will emerge at these older ages, and our planet is already pretty busy. First thing to consider is these changes that we're talking about are not going to happen tomorrow. They're going to be happening slowly, the same way we've doubled our lifespan over the last 150 years, and we've slowly adapted. The reality is that we know a lot about the science of ageing. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. But the big scientific breakthroughs just aren't there yet. So I guess I come away from this feeling more than ever that it's so important to live your healthiest life. Just maybe not quite to the extent of Brian Johnson. Lucky us, we exist. Let's play the most fun games we can for as long as we can. Thank <laughs> you.